Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very glad to, to be here. I'm very glad to be in Bilbao. Uh, this is my first uh, Euro Python, and I want to talk about uh, async your stack and React.js or uh, development on the edge. Uh, but let me start uh, with a small intro. Uh, I'm a Python and React.js developer, and my primary uh, task on the, my works is uh, designing and developing uh, backend API. So I'm like a backend API uh, master, uh, but uh, let, let, me, let me show how uh, I will get uh, to that uh, stage. Uh, everything starts uh, in 2002 when I uh, first met uh, Microsoft front page. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> that was scary times, but <laughs> that was. Uh, then I uh, start learning the PHP, uh, HTML4. It's like a st standard uh, stack for uh, that uh, times. It's what uh, it was very very a long time ago. Uh, and then uh, I start my own uh, design, uh, web design studio and make some sites uh, for uh, corporate sites, internet shops for Ukrainian uh, companies. Uh, and uh, then sometime in 2007, I uh, decided that uh, PHP is bad. <laughs> and uh, start looking around, uh, start looking around on what else I should use and the two uh, options, uh, Ruby or Python. Uh, and I decided uh, to start using Python and uh, Django. Django 095 or 096. Uh, so uh, I started using uh, Python and my life uh, getting better, better, better. Uh, I started my outsourcing career uh, with uh, Django, uh, then uh, switched to uh, Odesk professional services. So we made services for uh, Google, Facebook, and other big uh, companies. And then in 2011, I met uh, Flask, uh, the, big, uh, the next big WoW uh, Python project. So I uh, primarily switched it uh, from uh, Django uh, to Flask. Uh, that was a good time, and I used Flask maybe for two, three uh, years in a row. Uh, but then uh, we in my work, I uh, need to, to go back to Django, and right now I also uh, work, working with uh, Django as a framework. Uh, so, uh, from my uh, point of view, I'm Python developer for eight years. I'm using Django from uh, ancient times. I'm using Flask from uh, ancient times, but I'm not happy. I'm not happy with all these technologies. Uh, this is me when I uh, in, when I need to, uh, to figure out why my Django app uh, working slow or why uh, developers around uh, uh, my team uh, use it uh, dot notation for giving ID for, for foreign key. Uh, so it's it's like mess, 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 and I'm looking uh, around. So I made a decision. I uh, want uh, to uh, switch to JavaScript, and you uh, should be looks like. What? What? <laughs> JavaScript? Come on, it's, it's not, not an answer. And uh, uh, I agree with you, because uh, JavaScript was bad. It's like in the uh, first big uh, JavaScript uh, library was, uh, I think it's prototype, uh, and it's big and scary, and then uh, jQuery uh, uh, banged on stage, but it's also... Uh, First, it was small, but then, oh, oh, mess, mess, mess. Uh, and my motto was, uh, like, uh, let's front-end tasks uh, make someone else. Because I I'm, I'm really don't want to, to uh, make front-end tasks. Because uh, when you uh, start making JavaScript uh, code in, uh, I don't know, uh, three, four years ago, you're like, why? Why I need to, to do this? Because uh, Python is very clear, very uh, uh, simple language. Uh, uh, <laughs> if uh, we uh, compare it to JavaScript in uh, that days, uh, the biggest uh, JavaScript problems for me uh, that was uh, no standard models. You know, this uh, script mess in templates. So you're like. Uh, uh, someone includes a script here, uh, someone uh, there, someone there, 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 and you don't know uh, where you, uh, uh, where uh, that or uh, else uh, library uh, introduced it uh, to your project. And it's very hard to maintain because uh, you need uh, to copy paste all, all your code across the projects, across uh, the uh, across the directories. It's, it's, it's a mess. 
Uh, but then uh, Node.js happens, and uh, it's good. It's good that it happens, because uh, Node.js uh, brings uh, NPM, and NPM starts uh, installing dependencies. And when you have a system for installing dependencies, uh, all, code, uh, all code resolution uh, starts being, uh, being easy, easy, and easy. And uh, people around uh, JavaScript world uh, start uh, to deciding uh, how to uh, uh, how to share their code across the uh, uh, different projects. So common JS happens, and uh, then uh, people decided uh, that we don't need uh, so much uh, script inclusions in, in HTML pages. So uh, browserify. Uh, 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 happens, and then people uh, understand that uh, they need to lint uh, their code, and then uh, various linters uh, happens. And then p uh, even some people decided that, uh, okay, we, uh, we could use Node.js for making backend applications, but, mm. <laughs> serious. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh. <laughs> Uh, how uh, uh, it's a uh, very, uh, very um, simple example on how it was earlier. Yeah, it's like uh, somewhere in template HTML, uh, you need to, to include all this uh, uh, code. Yeah, you, uh, you need to, to import underscore, then, then you should use uh, global uh, underscore, and that, that, that was mess. Uh, but uh, right now, in uh, some iterations, uh, JavaScript. Uh, uh, to uh, some uh, better, yeah. Uh, you have uh, one bundle. Uh, one bundle uh, have all your functions, uh, everything, you, everything you need. And you uh, in template in HTML templates, all you need uh, to call your functions. It's uh, like in normal uh, programming languages. Uh, so and uh, uh, the uh, the all all code you see is uh, start looking uh, better, better, better. And right now, I want to talk how, how it's possible, uh, which changed in uh, JavaScript world. Uh, and uh, I want uh, to welcome ECMAScript uh, 2015. Uh, it's previously known as ES6, uh, but right now it's changed name for ES2015. Uh, so uh, let's see uh, what uh, JavaScript uh, has. Uh, first of all, uh, it's modulus. Yeah, it's like. Uh, Normal models from Python, uh, from Python. Yeah, okay. We can uh, use uh, import. We can use uh, import for libraries, uh, for functions, and uh, as you see in uh, uh, libraries, uh, we can uh, use export uh, some functions. Uh, so we can uh, use this uh, like function or like library. Uh, okay, uh, JavaScript has models. It's a good start, uh, but also a better start that. JavaScript uh, no more have uh, uh, var uh, for defining va variables. Uh, so uh, right now JavaScript have let and const. Uh, const is for constants uh, is obvious. Uh, so uh, if you try to change your constant, you will get an error. And uh, let uh, works properly in blocks, uh, uh, so uh, you don't have uh, all the problems uh, that you have with uh, war outside, inside, inside the blocks, because uh, you uh, can uh, to define uh, one let only in one block. So it's uh, it's fixed var for uh, for uh, for ES uh, 2015. Next, uh, you don't need uh, to use a uh, function, a uh, special word, uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, execute some uh, uh, very, uh, si simple, very simple tasks. So uh, if we have in uh, episodes uh, var, uh, some list of with Star Wars episodes, we can uh, filter them with arrow function. So you, need, uh, you don't need uh, to write function, uh, then item, and then return item. And arrow functions uh, couldn't have uh, uh, the body and could have a body. Uh, next, uh, JavaScript uh, ES uh, 2015 uh, have uh, normal classes. Uh, so uh, this is a built-in feature. Uh, so uh, we can uh, use normal classes here. Yeah. Uh, classes uh, should ha uh, can have inheritance. Uh, uh, classes have constructor method. Uh, classes uh, is it's like normal classes uh, from other languages, so it's uh, good, good, good direction. Uh, JavaScript also uh, there are all, uh, 
also very uh, bad in, in the past that uh, JavaScript uh, doesn't have uh, multi-lines uh, strings. Right now they have. Uh, you see it's a multi-line string uh, uh, started from third line. It works and uh, multi-line strings uh, have uh, simple for formatting. It's not uh, that good like in Python because you uh, need to, to uh, Defi define the variables uh, to use in uh, templates before the template, but it's, it's something. Uh, next, uh, this feature, one of the best features I, I, uh, I used in JavaScript is destructing uh, something. Uh, Python also have uh, f f first uh, uh, type of destruction. Yeah, we can uh, destruct uh, by uh, uh, destruct list or tuple uh, by the variables. Uh, but uh, JavaScript also have uh, also uh, have uh, an object destruction. Uh, and uh, when you uh, start using uh, object destruction in JavaScript, uh, all you need uh, object destruction, uh, dig destruction in uh, Python, because uh, it's uh, very. Uh, uh, Powerful and very uh, good thing. Next, uh, JavaScript uh, introduced uh, new uh, types uh, for, for the standard library. It's map and set. It's very very funny that in this uh, 2015 and map and set only included in JavaScript when we have in Python as times ago. But <laughs> a slow slow box <laughs> everywhere. Uh, so, but uh, right now we have uh, map uh, and set in JavaScript. And more, it's not uh, all features of uh, ES uh, 2015, there are more, more features and uh, I, uh, I will uh, post my slides so you can uh, uh, ch check all, all the features of ES 2015. Uh, they have also iterators, uh, generators and improved uni Unicode. Uh, and proxies, symbols, promises, and more, more. And uh, the most uh, brightest part of all of this is that uh, JavaScript, uh, uh, ECMAScript, uh, changed how it uh, uh, how it uh, uses the standard. So there, there are no no big. Uh, Okay, in next uh, next year there would be uh, AS 2016, then AS 2017, and and then. And new, new, new features uh, would be uh, shipped uh, to uh, st standard language. Uh, so uh, in ES uh, 2016, maybe uh, there would be comprehensions, class properties, function bind, I think functions like we have in Python 3.5 and, and then. So JavaScript uh, not uh, staying uh, on uh, on the place and uh, corporations and uh, companies around the world uh, are willing to uh, Develop, develop better, better, better JavaScript. So no, not bad, not bad. Uh, and uh, maybe if you are asking uh, how to use it, uh, you need uh, only one. Uh, you need to, uh, to use Babel for all good things. Uh, so Babel supports uh, your bundle uh, management system like Browserify or Webpack. And uh, with Babel, there emerges one and only uh, lint tool. So you have uh, three, three tools uh, for all you need. Uh, Babel for transpiling uh, ES 2015 to all TS5 and Browserify or Webpack uh, to make bundles from all your code, and ESLint uh, to make sure that all your code is conform your coding style gu guides. So everything is uh, starting easier and easier in uh, JS world. Uh, so uh, there are more and more uh, better projects are, uh, start uh, developing ar around JS world, and uh, uh, there is uh, how I... Uh, uh, I found React JS because uh, when when I start uh, learning about ES uh, 2015, I, I uh, checking that uh, many many people are uh, looking uh, on how to use these all cool f features, and they uh, decided to, to use these all cool features with React JS. What is React JS? React JS is a painless UI, uh, UI framework. Uh, it's uh, only UI. It's uh, only a framework uh, for making user interface. So it's no. Uh, uh, event handling like in Backbone, so it's uh, no like uh, some data uh, binding like uh, in Angular. It's like only a framework for rendering uh, your components uh, to web page, and uh, it uses virtual DOM as like uh, standard uh, uh, 
browser DOM is uh, very, very uh, heavy. Uh, React uh, JS introduces uh, to the world uh, virtual DOM concepts that use it right now by many other uh, JavaScript uh, frameworks, and uh, that concept is uh, willing you uh, to uh, use uh, lightwise uh, components and uh, change it and uh, do everything uh, faster, faster, and faster. And the main uh, feature of the React.js is one-way reactive data flow. It's, it means that you can uh, send all you need to the components only one way from the top to the bottom. Uh, I, I see uh, this in the slides. And uh, React.js uh, has a very strong community around, so there are a lot of uh, already built-in components, so your start is very easy because there are a lot of tutorials, a lot of uh, docs, uh, a lot of a lot of everything. Uh, so uh, is, uh, this is uh, the uh, most easier and most uh, simplest uh, React.js uh, component. You see, uh, it's a simple class which you need to define render method. Uh, this uh, React uh, component will. Uh, Render hello Python to the React container uh, element on the page. Uh, okay, okay. This is a, a, a example with with the state. Uh, every, uh, when the state changed, uh, you, you see, yeah, uh, state definition on the second line, and then using state uh, uh, after the render method. When state change, a uh, render uh, method would be. Uh, Revelating, so you change the state and component uh, will re-render, will render. So this is the main idea of React. Uh, when the state change, everything re-renders, uh, uh, and 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 you see, yeah, uh, when when we click on the button, uh, set, uh, state change it, uh, and uh, our uh, our body will uh, will be re-rendered. Uh, next, using components. Uh, sorry, sorry for not, not fitting the uh, screen. Uh, using components, uh, React uh, uh, make uh, happens uh, uh, make make possible to introduce uh, some components and using uh, them in in the like uh, HTML text. You see uh, the line with if preview. And we're using uh, the new, uh, not HTML tag, but new component uh, which named Markdown. So, uh, like uh, f f fetching data, it's next. Next, we we use a new pr uh, new uh, fetch API for fetching data, so we don't need uh, jQuery or other li libraries uh, for fetching data fr from the server. So we use fetch and then promises uh, to fetching data. And you see uh, when we have. Uh, uh, good data. We're setting it uh, with uh, uh, setting it into to the component uh, comments, and wh when that uh, data is bad, we setting it like uh, false uh, with uh, false status. Uh, and then in, ren in gen render method, uh, when uh, when component uh, first uh, uh, will will be mounted, uh, it will have uh, not null status. Uh, so then we uh, show loading uh, to the user. Uh, then uh, due to uh, status and data, we show our server error or empty data or valid data uh, to the user. It's very easy to use and uh, very easy to write. And uh, then uh, I will show you what means one-way data binding. Uh, it's like uh, if we have on, on the page uh, comments component and comment, uh, we introduce uh, comments, uh, do some uh, fetching data, and then uh, mapping all, uh, uh, all comments to uh, simple comment uh, components. What it means? What it, it means that uh, comment component doesn't change the state, because uh, comment uh, components uh, have uh, properties, yeah, have props. Uh, when data changes in higher component, uh, it would be re render uh, inner uh, co uh, comment component. So uh, in uh, React uh, terms, uh, the comments is a higher order component, and comment is dump component. Uh, what it means for us, like uh, developers, that uh, we need uh, to d develop only uh, higher order components on our project, and all reusable uh, dump components uh, sh should be shareable uh, between our project, our projects. So it's uh, easy uh, to uh, de develop uh, user faces, and that's not uh, that's not not all React features. Uh, 
In O14, uh, React even splits uh, base React layer and React DOM to different packages. It means that uh, right, right now you can use React not uh, only uh, with uh, uh, DOM uh, model, you can use uh, as React Native, uh, which use it in iPhones, and React Canvas, is, uh, which use it in Canvas tech. So you don't need uh, the document of object model uh, to uh, use the React. Uh, and more, uh, React have uh, magnificent routing system, so you can use, uh, uh, you can develop uh, single page applications with ease. Uh, React have uh, many, many, many reusable components, and React uh, even have uh, many, many, many uh, 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 technologies uh, to uh, fetch data uh, from from the server, like Flux, Relay, or GraphQL. And uh, when you start uh, using React, you're like, "Wow, it's 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 re it's really cool. It's it's really cool because it's it's easy. It's uh, e easy to develop, easy to maintain, uh, easy to uh, introduce your components uh, to other other people in your team." And uh, here, here uh, is the question. And what about uh, backend side? What about Python side? I don't want to use uh, any, anything in Node.js uh, to make in uh, backends. I don't, uh, I don't want to use uh, any isomorphic or universal or how, how it's uh, spelled uh, JavaScript for making backends. Uh, so uh, what about Python? And uh, here comes uh, the most intriguing and most uh, New, uh, uh, new uh, Python. Uh, I don't know, not not Python library, but Python uh, stack is async async your stack. Uh, I think we all know what what means async here is like uh, uh, standard asynchronous input output event loop for routines and tasks. It's it's very easy. It's included in Python 3.4. And available in Python 3.3. Uh, so, and I hope that uh, everyone uh, knows what what is uh, async here about. But I think here is a very uh, low low level stack. So you need to, to introduce uh, libraries uh, for using uh, for using databases or for making web applications. Uh, and then how uh, IO HTTP. Uh, uh, makes makes sense because IO HTTP is uh, HTTP uh, client server for async here. It's uh, uh, it's very very easy. I think uh, I hope you, you understand uh, what, what's going on here. It's uh, 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 IOS HTTP client, uh, and uh, this is uh, IOS HTTP uh, server. Because uh, so uh, this is a simple hello world in uh, IOS HTTP web. Uh, all, all you need uh, to make uh, your view, fun view, view function a coroutine and then uh, returning a response. So uh, ev everything is easy, and uh, this um, uh, and this I IOPG is uh, it's also very very, very easy. O all you need is uh, coroutine and then create pool. It's like uh, it's like our, all our, our uh, previous scene code, but uh, made in, with yield forms. <laughs> Uh, and uh, are you ready? I think you're ready. And many, many, many tools. Uh, so uh, when uh, when I uh, start looking around uh, the Python, uh, I will I will look uh, on the Django, Django REST framework, Flask, uh, Flask Restless, Flask Eve, and many, many, many solutions. But all the solutions. Uh, uh, doesn't feel uh, like better solutions for me because I, I want to, to step up. I want to, to use something something new. And uh, here is uh, uh, where uh, IOS HTTP and I think your stack uh, is uh, uh, fit, 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 fit in my needs. Uh, and and you see, it's many, many libraries already developed for uh, I think it's like uh, co connecting with MySQL, Mongo, CouchDB, uh, Elasticsearch, and man, many many other uh, technologies. Uh, and even some web frameworks already available, uh, uh, which uh, built uh, built on top of IOHTP web, uh, name it Muffin and induction induction and spanner. It's like Flask on IOHTP web. Uh, so if you're interested, you may uh, see, see here. Uh, but uh, I want to introduce uh, IOHTP web to you, and this is briefly introduction uh, with uh, all uh, all. Uh, features uh, that uh, have uh, that uh, that framework is 
uh, very easy and very easy to understand and very very easy to use. And as uh, it used also uh, one way, uh, <laughs> not not like uh, uh, interact one way uh, data flow, uh, one way data binding flow, but also one one way flow with uh, request uh, object uh, passing to the view function. You also uh, can enjoy enjoy this in your projects. Okay, this is uh, the very very simple hello hello world, yeah. Uh, this is uh, how you uh, made your applications. It's very similar uh, to, the, to the Flask. I, I think it's very, very Flask way to make an, an applications. And this is uh, how you uh, serve in your uh, IOHTP applications. Uh, I recommend to use Gunicorn, but if Gunicorn are not fits uh, your needs, you can use, uh, uh, I think, your uh, event loop or other, uh, other solutions. And Gunicorn have uh, magic uh, reload flag, uh, so uh, you don't need some re reload solutions uh, which built into Django Dev Server or Flask Web Server. You have uh, uh, code, code reloads uh, in uh, Gunicorn too. Okay, uh, and uh, this is uh, how uh, IOHTP web uh, handling get post data. Uh, you see it's uh, handling uh, get uh, data, uh, you have uh, get multidict like in uh, Django, like in Flask, like in e everywhere. And uh, then you have uh, uh, reading uh, from the post, uh, post data, so uh, as, as you need to, to read this, so you need to, to yield, yield from uh, to not, not to block uh, EO to, to read data uh, from, from the request. Uh, and, and then, okay, ne next, hand, uh, like you add a new roads uh, to your uh, application, it's very, very similar uh, to ev uh, every other solution uh, we have in, Py in Python world. Uh, even we have uh, uh, variable roads, it's some, something like this, it's not very, very good uh, architectural decision from my point of view, because uh, uh, if we uh, uh, compare this uh, to Django or Flask, uh, in Django and Flask we have project ID like an uh, argument, like positional argument uh, to the view function, but here uh, we read uh, it uh, from matching for dict. It's uh, it's not not very good solution for me, but I, I think Andrei Svetlov is uh, author and maintainer of this uh, library, and uh, he will have. Uh, a big uh, class uh, about uh, using IOHTP web on Wednesday, so you uh, can ask uh, him why he decided to, to do this. Uh, and then, then uh, yeah, uh, you can use uh, name it name it roads. Uh, you can uh, use uh, rever reversing uh, roads. Uh, so you can uh, use ev everything. Yeah, you can uh, as uh, uh, the main as the main. Uh, the, uh, one of the greatest uh, abilities of IOHTP web is that application is uh, uh, inherited from the dict, so you can uh, uh, just uh, uh, modify uh, dict uh, like you need. Here, here you just put uh, settings to the app dict, so uh, ev every app uh, in your, uh, when, when you get up, uh, you have your settings, so you don't need uh, to import your settings uh, anymore. Uh, so uh, and next uh, that uh, app is uh, appended uh, to your request object, uh, so uh, you 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 see you don't need to, to do from import uh, Django config inform settings or so from uh, something import settings. You just uh, use your application with settings in the view uh, directly in the view, uh, and then uh, uh, how to. Um, uh, how to custom, customize your HTTP web? Uh, you, you should use uh, middlewares. Uh, there are a lot of middlewares for user sessions, uh, for uh, every 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 scene. And uh, this is an uh, uh, example of uh, trivial uh, middleware and how to use it with your web application. And uh, this is a uh, uh, real a real code uh, for using uh, the book toolbar um, uh, middleware factory or session session middleware. So you ha you could have your uh, toolbar or session middleware in your IOHTP web uh, application. So uh, it's very 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 easy and very very similar to other solutions uh, in in Python. And this middleware is like uh, handling exceptions. All you need to catch an exception and then 
uh, <laughs> rendering uh, an error view. So uh, user sessions uh, once more once time again. So it's like you use in session that you uh, first you introduce middleware, then you uh, read in from the session not blocking I.O. and then write to the session. So everything is clear and everything is uh, easy easy to use. Uh, even uh, uh, HTTP web uh, could, could use it for rendering templates. Uh, I, I'm not sure that uh, we need to use HTTP web for rendering templates because uh, it's not, 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 not that, that solution, it's, but it, it, could, it uh, could, could be used. So first you need to set up uh, Jinja 2 the Jinja 2 example, and then uh, just uh, re render render to play it. And uh, this decorator is uh, obviously coroutine, so you don't need to, to decorate it to decorate your view function with uh, coroutine again. Or if you need uh, to some some uh, more, uh, you could use a, a render template function. So everything is easy, and everything like uh, ev everywhere. And uh, here you can use, uh, you can uh, serve in static files, uh, so it is easy for development, so uh, every, every, everything is okay on your development server. So everything like uh, everywhere in Python. And next is uh, how, how you can use your stat static, static files in templates. Okay, and more, uh, uh, as uh, there are uh, br brief introductions, so it's not, not uh, every feature that IOHTP web has. Uh, uh, it also have uh, web sockets, except uh, uh, header uh, custom conditions for rows, lookup, uh, class-based handlers, so you can use uh, not uh, view functions, but uh, class-based uh, uh, solutions for handling, uh, what, what, for handling the routing. And I say it again, uh, IOHTP web has uh, web sockets uh, built in, so you don't need to, to look uh, around on how to implement web sockets in my web application. So ju just use IOHTP web and you have your web socket server and client. So uh, me, me gusta. <laughs> and uh, re real world usage. Uh, I uh, use uh, IOHTP web uh, for uh, backend API. It's obvious uh, for a project uh, uh, from, uh, which named uh, Money Tracker, and uh, that, that project is uh, uh, looking for my task around, around uh, different uh, uh, issue trackers like uh, Jira, like uh, Pivotal, like uh, other, and uh, it may be possible to track time which I spent uh, for um, for fixing some some issues, and uh, this is a, a sim simple st structure of my of my project. You see, it's n n nothing new. Uh, I have application application pi. When I have my application, I have views pi. When I have my some uh, uh, some my uh, Glo global views. I have uh, layer stor stor storage by layer for uh, in, uh, for working with uh, database, and I have API and OS. Uh, I don't know sub apps uh, for uh, API. It's uh, for providing for providing my API and OS for providing our application for that, that project. And uh, there are uh, se several uh, addi additional. Um, so several additional uh, uh, functions uh, I use in my uh, pro uh, functions and uh, tools I use in my projects. It's like uh, adding uh, roads uh, for for the application, simplifying adding roads for the application. Uh, it's uh, uh, immutable settings. Uh, we, we use uh, mapping type uh, proxy from Python 3.3, so our, our settings are immutable. Uh, uh, we, we can use uh, debug mode uh, in, in, in the application. Uh, so uh, uh, right now, is IO HTTP web is very raw. It's uh, only on, on the beginning, so it's many, many uh, features not uh, introduced or not developed, uh, but... Uh, 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 there, are many, there are many that we need to, to uh, develop, uh, but I, I think in uh, several uh, next uh, months, uh, the ecosystem around the IOHTP web uh, uh, would be uh, uh, would be larger, larger, larger. So we could use it uh, like 
like uh, we use uh, Flask or Django without any any pain. Uh, and then uh, uh, the most uh, interesting uh, thing that uh, I discovered when uh, I uh, using uh, iOS TP Web for, for my API uh, backend is that uh, I, I should use a JSON uh, schema uh, for uh, scamming my uh, data like. Uh, I, I could use uh, this uh, same schema for uh, validating data on uh, backend and on front end. And uh, here, with a uh, little help of my project, uh, which is called Roro, I using a schema on the uh, for adding adding the project. You see, uh, we have this this kind of schema that uh, pro uh, the project can have name, uh, Slack, and description, and uh, the the uh, project. Uh, sh uh, would uh, respond with uh, its ID, and then how how it use? Yeah, uh, that we we should uh, validate a request on the uh, server, and then we should uh, validate a response on the client with uh, one uh, sim similar schema. It's uh, very very good, but also very raw solution uh, for uh, validating for you uh, for ensuring that we have a proper proper data in uh, the. Uh, IOS TP web application and the in React JS application, uh, and uh, then uh, there is a question: uh, Why might need uh, async your stack? Uh, so uh, there are a lot of uh, already developed solutions in Django, in uh, uh, Flask. So why why you need to, uh, to s switch on? Uh, come on, because it's cool and trendy. <laughs> just switch on, because uh, you, you just uh, need uh, to uh, check, check, check it out, uh, check uh, where uh, Python world is uh, heading. heading. Uh, but uh, honestly, uh, you need it uh, when uh, your database uh, API is, uh, well, uh, when, when you begin the API is databaseless. Uh, when you uh, have uh, a lot of uh, requests to the external APIs, uh, so uh, you could use uh, your, uh, uh, all, all the power of async here, all the power of asynchronous input output. Uh, when uh, you need uh, your uh, code uh, to be executed uh, in async style, and that code uh, uh, that need uh, to be executed in predictable. Uh, style, so you don't need uh, any magic uh, which provides eventlet or javent or, uh, or other solutions. Uh, in that cases, uh, you should consider to use uh, I think your stack on the back end. And, uh, and, and, and the summary. Uh, I think uh, uh, the future is here. Uh, I, uh, I, I suggest to use uh, Python 3.4 for, for all good things because uh, if you're still using Python 2 like me you know, on the, on the work, it's 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 so so. A Python 3.4 is uh, stable. Uh, it's a very uh, good uh, uh, version of, of the Python. Uh, you can you should use it uh, in uh, in in the work in, for for your uh, pet projects or something because. Uh, iOS TP Web is easy to start, easy to use. Uh, so you you could have a proper uh, async async your web uh, 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 web web framework. Uh, IOPG uh, have uh, Syscall Alchemy, so you should forget about the OREM. You don't need to object relation relationship ma man management. Uh, you you should uh, just use IOPG uh, Syscall Alchemy. And if you miss something, uh, just support it to I think your stack. It's not not that easy, uh, or it's not not <laughs> not that not that hard. So just don't forget to pay back to open source software. And uh, from other parts of uh, of of my slides, uh, that uh, JavaScript is also uh, makes a very great step uh, in uh, right direction. Uh, many tools around JavaScript is maturing, uh, so right now you should uh, you could use uh, you could write your uh, user interface code without without the pain. Uh, building uh, a bundling is easy. Webpack linting is easy. Aslint making UI is easy. React. So uh, it's uh, how, I, how it's how I see uh, the evolution of. Uh, uh, making uh, user interfaces uh, around uh, the Python, uh, we, we should uh, start using more uh, I think your uh, I think your stack on the back end and using proper tools like React on the front end. And this 
uh, this relation uh, sh uh, makes uh, happen. Uh, this relation uh, makes uh, able uh, to build a very uh, simple, very easy uh, web applications. And this is true story. <laughs> okay, so <this> is <laughs> I I'll answer your questions. Thank you, Igor. Uh, we unfortunately are run, uh, out of time for questions, but if you have something to ask, uh, don't hesitate to reach out for Igor in the hallways and uh, ask him. Uh, the next session here will start in five minutes. Ah, okay. Uh, it's uh, Sphinx and I have API documentation. Small bonus: it's how it looks in Python 3.5.